Hello and welcome to section 8, part 1, where we're just going to do a bit of an intro to our command system and I possibly will replace this video as the system updates, but I just wanted to, before we proceed with the uh, section, I wanted to provide a straightforward disclaimer. <laughs> this section will be pretty extensive and, and long, and it's going to focus on creating a very specific system. It's not intended for a general purpose use. It's not a general purpose RTS command system. So I just want to ensure that no one's time's wasted by misunderstanding the, the scope and the purpose of this section. Uh, please keep in mind as you as you watch on, and I strongly advise you consider the needs of your project before like embarking on this journey of making this system. So the disclaimer is look, point one, I am learning this as I make it and the design has had many iterations and will probably have more in the future. It's not a system that's been proven in a game release or production. And the intent for these recordings is to provide a learning aid only. So the command system itself, as you can see there, it, it is going to be a command queue system. So you can queue up orders. It can, can accommodate all, it's, the design of it is to accommodate all commands, so you can do all sorts of different stuff, but the focus initially would be on just for our navigation, our moving of our groups. And it is designed for fixed groups, so it's not, you know, like select a bunch of random dudes and uh, issue a command to them. You can do, it, it, it will do like individual unit movements, partial group movements and full group movements, so it's still got flexibility in that regard. And you can do groups of groups, so like, but it, it is designed around a fixed group, as in a fixed actor, which controls some entities, and you'll see that when I discuss the, the design of it. Um, it does have a, a dynamic movement algorithm in it, which calculates entity positions, and that just limits their crossover and entanglement when they change directions and things like that, which I'll give you a demo of in a sec. And it, it will accommodate different entity sizes, so it's designed to work with vehicles and other things as well. So not fully proven that part of it, but it, it definitely works with different size entities. What it definitely is not is a total war type movement system. It's not like Age of Empires movement system. You know, I'd, I haven't implemented arches at the back or anything like that. It, it is designed more in mind of small military type groups. It's not a large scale thing. It's not, it's not meant for thousands of entities. It's, it's made for more smaller range type game implementations. It's currently still under development. So as we go through, there's, there's going to be many parts you can pull out to this. If you don't want this exact system, uh, that, you know, the queue system might be just all you want and the, and the command implementation, you, that you'll be able to pull those things out, not a problem. I'm going to try and keep it separated as much as I can, but obviously it's going to be fairly heavily integrated into the RTS framework. Um, at the moment, I don't really have keys for like changing formations or, or modifying spacing, but I, I plan to add that in the future as well as um, what I, I can't think of a better term, but it's like a prefix formation memory. So you, you can position your groups in a certain formation and then say, hey, remember this formation and move like this every time I tell you to move. So that, that's another thing I want to implement. But anyway, time permitting, I hope to add to the system as we go and into the future. I strongly encourage anyone that has uh, better methods to achieve any part of this series to come to the Discord community and share those methods. Uh, the plan initially will be to implement the, well, first of all, in the first, well, technically part two now, we'll first discuss the command pattern and it, because that's the basis of what's gonna, how we're gonna implement this. And then we'll move on to the data and asset creation, the command system itself, and then we'll get into interfacing with the, you know, the AI and issuing commands. So let's take a look at what we are going to create. So here I have two groups, one uh, six-man group and one seven-man group. And you can see the odd man group has a point guy with an even group side by side at the point there. And then for movement, I can hold and rotate my destination to tell them where to go. And I'll move to that. If it was on the side. And then you can see 
rather than maintain their position. So if I tell them to move over this direction, for example, then they won't just maintain the same positions. They'll go to the closest spots. So. So going backwards, you know, they're not going to try and rotate around. They're just going to go to those nearest spots. There's, there's a bit of funkiness going on with the movements there. It looks like I've just... This is my actual project, so I'm doing other things. <laughs> there's just something going on with the paths there, but I'll sort that out. So the entities will have formation data. And then in our group data we can determine so this is the six man group you can see your default formation is line and we'll be able to change them so now they're in line and then later on we'll be able to change them at runtime by and they're pressing a key or whatever so these guys are still in wedge at the moment I have it so if you select two groups it just sort of randomly picks one of them. so it's picked line there it picks whichever group becomes the group leader for a multi movement it um, picks their formation so now I've got two groups selected I can now move those groups in the same manner so I can select their orientation What is going on there? Anyway, um, and yeah, if I, you know, bring them backwards, they're not going to try and swap sides or anything like that. And if I go to the side, they'll go to the nearest spot. So that group's gone up, that group's gone down. You know, they're not going to mix the groups, they still stay with their group. Uh, one thing I don't have in, but also want to include later on is. That they're not waiting for other group members so, or other groups. So if one group's well ahead, or you know, they they will leave people behind as they move at the moment, which I plan to fix. Oh yeah. So the other thing we can do is we can do partial group select. So that's a fire team, and I can also do individual movement or partial movement. So now for the Q system, I'll, you can just hold key. I've got it currently set to, to Alt, but you can uh, just queue up. So I can say move here, move back here. Uh, maybe it, I think I've got it set to Control. So I can say move there, move there, move back here, move to the side, move to the other side. And I'll execute those commands in order. And if I give a queued command to a group, so I tell them to go there, then there, and these guys there, and there, and then I get the whole group and queue another command, they won't do that until everyone's ready. Not too fast for me there, I think. So let's go there, there. There. there, 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 and then there. <laughs> so you can see that's not the the overall group command is not interrupting. So these guys are waiting now. They're waiting for them. Now they're all ready, and they're all going to go do that group command together. So that's what we're going to be creating. Uh, it does work with quite a few units. I have tested it. it, it um, I'm actually using uh, multi-threading to do that dynamic calculation. So it's it's not in affecting the gameplay loop. But um, yeah, I haven't tested it past I don't know, 100 units or so. So see how you go with that if you want to push it. It gets hard to manage with the formations. 
Uh, cu currently, when you select multiple groups, they're still using a formation setup. That's where that's coming from. So if I have, if I add another group in. Uh, they'll they'll take the formation. So, so let me show you. If I set all the if I because they grab the leaders formation for the actual multi group formation. Like again later, I'll, I I want to have it so. Um. They will have their own format. You can change the formation for the whole like the multi group selection. But at the moment, it's just because we don't. I don't have a feature into tell it what formation it's just picks a group leader so it picks a group uh, a lead group and then it uses the group leader in that group it gets his details to run the formation so now you see that they'll all be in wedge and the actual formation will be in a wedge so they're in a wedge they're in a wedge and they're in a wedge over here but the actual format the actual formation is also a wedge when they move, it'll be in a wedge. That's what we're going to be making. If you're interested in making something like this or some part of it, I'll see you in part two. Thanks for watching.